Hi, my name is Shreya Rajpal and today I am going to be talking about how to control large language model outputs for practical applications. Uh, and we're going to be using the open source framework called Guardrails AI in order to do this. Um, so why do we need to control large language model outputs in the first place? Uh, large language models are awesome, but they have uh, a few different issues, primarily because they don't always behave how we expect them to. Um, for starters, they are brittle and hard to control. Uh, and common issues that we might run into as we're building large language model applications uh, are that the LLM app works while prototyping, but it ends up being flaky or does doing unexpected behavior when we run it in production. Um, getting correct outputs from large language models in a very consistent manner uh, is hard. Uh, and common examples of incorrect outputs that we may experience are hallucinations, falsehoods, lack of correct structure, etc. Uh, additionally, the only tool that is available to a developer uh, is the prompt, which is insufficient. Um, because of these reasons, the Practical application of an LLM whenever um, the correctness of the LLM output is essential, um, those, those applications end up being limited. So how do we correct for this um, problem by being able to control the LLM outputs better? Um, for starters, why is this problem challenging and um, what are the common tools that developers use in order to control LLMs? Uh, the first one is using the prompt in order to make the LLM listen to directions or follow instructions. Um, but this is problematic because LLMs are fundamentally stochastic and this uh, results in behavior where the same input may not guarantee the same output uh, across multiple runs. Another issue with this is that a prompt doesn't offer any guarantees. So even if you request certain behavior in the prompt by asking an LLM to generate some output or to always avoid some output, uh, LLMs don't always follow those instructions. Um, another tool that people often use is by trying to control the underlying model by updating the model weights, et cetera. Um, but this is an expensive and time-consuming process. Both training and fine-tuning a model on some custom data uh, is much harder than just using an LLM hidden behind an API. Um, but because LLMs are hidden behind APIs, there's also no control over model version updates, etc. cetera. So um, the, the, the underlying model might get updated by the model provider, even if the API remains consistent. A third utility, um, which often being often ends up being you know a very useful and very practical, uh, is combining an LLM with an output verification system and using this combination as a way to enforce uh, control over the LLM outputs. Um, so what this means is that we can build application-specific checks and verification programs that ensure that the LLM output is correct um, for, for, for some context. So now let's go into what this architecture actually looks like. Um, for starters, this is what standard development of an LLM workflow looks like, where there's some application logic, and within that application logic is the LLM API call, where we end up getting a prompt uh, the prompt is then sent over to an LLM API, and we end up getting some output from the LLM that is then, you know, um, forwarded within that application logic. And how the Guardrails AI approach differs from this standard uh, route is that the raw output of the LLM is then sent over into a separate verification module. Um, so what this verification module does is it executes a number of independent small programs on the LLM output that check whether the LLM output behaves in a certain way or not. Uh, and depending on whether that verification passes or fails, next steps are taken. So as an example of some of the verification programs that you can add um, are making sure that there is no personally identifying information in the LLM output. 
uh, or making sure that the LLM output does not contain any profanity. Uh, if you're building an application for a specific company, making sure that no competitors of that company are mentioned. Uh, if there's code being generated, making sure that the code is executable within a certain runtime. Um, if you're generating summaries, making sure that the summaries are similar to the source text, etc. So each of these criteria is an independent program that is executed on top of the output of the LLM. Um, as a combination of these uh, programs, we either like pass validation, in which case, you know, the output is correct and we forward the raw output back to the application logic or validation fails, in which case we construct a new prompt um, and that prompt, the new prompt with relevant context about, you know, what specific validations failed is sent over to the LLM API and then corrected. So that is a framework that allows us to ensure guarantees, et cetera. But um, what does Guardrails AI provide you if you're building LLM applications in this manner? So Guardrails AI, first and foremost, uh, you know, gives you a very general framework for creating custom validators. Um, it also implements the whole orchestration of prompting and verification and reprompting. Um, it comes with a library of commonly used validators for multiple use cases. We'll get into this later in the tutorial. Um, and also it has a specification language for generating structured LLM outputs. So we're going to dig deeper into generating structured outputs specifically for this tutorial and see what that looks like. Um, so we go back to the diagram, but instead of looking at it uh, in a general way, we basically look at what does what needs to change in this diagram in order to generate the following desired output. So we have some application where let's say we're parsing some unstructured data to generate structured data and our LLM output um, should basically contain the following three uh, you know, uh, fields in uh, in a JSON. So we want our LLM to generate a JSON with the fields of name, age, and zip code. Um, additionally, for the application that we're building, let's say that our verification logic contains things like that the first and last name should be contained within the name, um, that the age should be less than 100, and in the zip code, let's say that we want California zip codes only. So what does this look like? What does ensuring this criteria with guardrails looks like? For starters, we create a prompt. Um, so with guardrails, one of the first things to do uh, is to uh, create a placeholder where guardrails can automatically inject information about the output structure. Um, so this information about, you know, that the output structure should contain three keys of name, age, and zip code, and what their respective formats should be is automatically created and inserted by guardrails. Um, this prompt is sent to the LLM, and let's say that we end up receiving the following output, um, where name and age are something, but then we also get the zip code that is incorrect. This output is passed over to the verification system. Uh, and when we verify it, we essentially have like two verif uh, verification system, verification programs that pass and a third verification program uh, that requests, you know, California zip codes only fails. Uh, because this logic failed, we essentially re-trigger uh, re prompting, et cetera, and a new prompt is automatically created with, by guardrails. Uh, and this prompt looks something like this, where we provide the relevant context about why the failure occurred, which is that the zip code was not a California zip code, um, and more helpful context about structuring the output uh, so that it can be combined with the previously generated output. So we only ask for the thing that was incorrect, uh, which in this case is the zip code. Um, with the new reask prompt, we end up getting a new reask output. And let's say the new output looks something like this. Um, when we run verification on this new output, we see that all our verification programs pass, uh, in which case this output is sent over to the LLM, uh, to the application logic directly. Um, here's a quick walkthrough of some examples of validators that are offered. So obviously JSON structure and type checking is some uh, some of the common ones, but also that you know validators about lists, about the quality of the text, like no profanity or quality of the translation, et cetera. 
uh, specific validators for summarization, um, specific validators, you know, for uh, not asking private questions, etc. But any validator, any custom validator can be created and supported by the framework. Um, we primarily talked about re-asking within the context of the framework, but uh, guardrails also offers other options for handling incorrect output. So options like fixing, like programmatically fixing the generated output. So let's say that the age uh, in our example was greater than 100, then we automatically set the max age to 100 that we programmatically fix. Uh, other cases might be filtering incorrect values. So here, instead of the asking the LLM to regenerate um, a new correct zip code, we maybe just like filter out incorrect zip codes. Um, refrain from answering where we don't answer at all. Um, no op, which is like take no action, but store the failure to log, um, um, to a log, and then finally raising an exception. Uh, in summary, Guardrails AI is a framework for uh, creating custom validators. Uh, it's a library of many commonly used validators across multiple use cases. It's an orchestration system for prompting, verification, and regenerating prompts, uh, in addition to having a specification language for generating structured LLM outputs. Um, to learn more about guardrails, you can follow along on the GitHub project at this link. Uh, check out our documentation at getguardrails.ai. Um, you can follow the Twitter account or you can join our Discord. Thank you.